donor of our grandparents and the elderly will take place at the Little Daughters of St. Joseph Retreat and Conference Centre, Karen, in the Archdiocese of Nairobi. The Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, His Excellency Bart Van Megen, will be the principal celebrant at the Holy Mass from 10 a.m. Capuchin TV is proud to be associated with Ethel Foundation for the Aged. I am with you always. Matthew 28 verse 20 is the message of Pope Francis for the first world day for grandparents and the elderly to be celebrated every fourth Sunday in the month of July. Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Pendwa Mumini Tumsifu Yesu Kristu. Jumapili hii ya kumi na saba ya kipindi cha kawaida. Capuchin TV tunajiunga na waumini wa parokia ya Bikira Maria, Malkia Wabingu, Regina Shelley, eneo la Karen, Jimbo Kuu la Nairobi. Ibada za misa ni kama ifuatavyo. Misa ya kwanza saa moja na nusu. Misa ya pili saa tatu na misa ya tatu saa tano asubuhi. Masomo ya misa. Somo la kwanza kutoka kitabu cha pili cha wafalme sura ya nne mstari wa 42 hadi wa 44 wimbo wa katikati zaburi 145 kitikio wao fumbo wa mkono wa ko wakishibisha kila kilicho hai mata kwa ya ke Somo la pili, waraka wa mtume Paulo kwa waifeso. Sura ya nne, mstari wa kwanza, hadi wane. Injili, ni kama ilivyo andikuwa na Yohane, sura ya sita, mstari wa kwanza, hadi wa kumi na tano. Basi Yesu akaitoa ile mikate, akashukuru, akawagawia walioketi na kathalika katika wale samaki kwa kadiri walivyotaka. Endelea kutazama Capuchin TV, kitambulisho katoliki. Sakramenti ni nini? Na misingi yake iko wapi katika Biblia takatifu? Wavijua vipindi vya kanisa katoliki ni alama na vyombo gani vinavyotumika katika maadhimisho ya ibada zetu? Ungana nasi kila siku ya Jumanne saa moja na nusu jioni katika kipindi cha Sakramenti na Biblia. Ni kutoka hapa Capuchin TV tukiikuza imani katoliki kwa pamoja. Coronavirus COVID-19 is a respiratory virus spreading across the world. The infection is spread from droplets of coughing and sneezing of an infected person, touching or shaking hands or being in contact with contaminated surfaces or objects with the virus. The signs and symptoms are fever, coughing, headache, body ache, difficulty in breathing. The disease can be prevented by regularly washing hands with soap and running water. Avoid close contact with people who have flu-like symptoms. Avoid handshake, hugs, and kissing. Also, protect yourself by covering your mouth or nose using a disposable tissue while coughing or sneezing. If you experience these symptoms and you had traveled or been in contact with a person from a country reporting COVID-19, you should isolate yourself for 14 days and seek immediate medical attention or report to the nearest health center. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. For accurate information on COVID-19, dial star 719 hash or call 719. Follow us on Twitter at MOH underscore Kenya at spokesperson GOK at WHO.
I kindly request that you be seated for a while. Your Excellency Archbishop Urbetus Matthäus Maria van Megen, the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, where Reverend Father Angelo Betelli the Pontifical Commissary of the Religious Missionary Institute of the Apostle of Jesus, the members of the Commissariat, the coordinators, members of Mazoldi and Marengoni family, Reverend Father Ibrahim, the representative of the Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Kericho, relatives and friends of our disease confreres, all the family of the Apostle of Jesus, the Christians of Kericho Diocese, and especially from Kaboloin Parish, the Shrine Community, all religious men and women consecrated, dear brothers and sisters, Tumsifu Yesu Christu. We are gathered in this shrine of the Sacred Heart of Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, with one intention to celebrate the life of our two priests, Reverend Father Gervas Charimpa and Reverend Father Proches Temu, who died on the 17th and 19th of this month. We are here to pray for them and to thank God for the life and for the service they have offered to the church and the people of God. Allow me to read the eulogy of the two diseased priests before we begin the Mass. Biography or eulogy of the late Reverend Father Gervas Bangirana Charimpa A.J. Family background. Reverend Father Gervas Banjirana Charimpa A.J. was born on September 4, 1962 in Uganda, Kambimbiri village, Buchinda sub-county in Kabale district, Kabale diocese in western Uganda. He was son of the late Mr. Fortunate Banjirana 
and Mrs. Rosalia Tibeahura, both were Christian parents. He was baptized on November 7, 1962, at St. Mary's Buchinda Catholic Parish in Kabale Diocese, Uganda, and received the sacrament of confirmation on January 23, 1976, at the same parish. Education and religious formation. He did his primary education at Cherero Primary School from 1975 to 1982. After his primary level studies, he felt called to join religious and missionary life through the Institute of the Apostle of Jesus and was admitted at the Apostle of Jesus Minor Seminary in Moroto, in Moroto Diocese, Uganda, where he undertook his ordinary level education from 1983 to 87. He did his advanced level education in St. Paul's High School, Rushoka, in Tungamu District, Uganda. Novitiate. He entered the Novitiate of Apostle of Jesus in Uruthiru, Mero Diocese, Kenya, in 1991 and made his first religious profession on June 29, 1993. The first Superior General Reverend Father John Masawe was his novice director. He was then admitted to the Major Seminary of Apostle of Jesus Philosophical in Nairobi from 1990 to 1992 where he successfully graduated with a diploma in Philosophy and Religious Studies, Theology. He joined the Scholasticate of Apostle of Jesus also in Nairobi as a young professor for theological studies from 1993. He undertook the transitory ministries of lecture and acolyte in preparation to the priesthood graduated with a diploma and a degree in sacred theology in 1998. Father Charimpa became a perpetual member of the Institute of Apostle of Jesus on August 22, 1998 with the profession of the final vows and he is member number 259 in the Institute. He was ordained to the diaconate on August 23, 1998 in Nairobi, Kenya, and to the priesthood on November 29, 1998 by Right Reverend Robert Gay, Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Kabale in Uganda. Apart from his formation in philosophy and theology, Father Charimpa did postgraduate diploma in secondary education at Makerere University in Kampala, Uganda, pastoral ministry. Father Gervas Charimpa served in various capacities in Uganda, Kenya, and South Africa regions. From 1998 to 1999, after his ordination as priest, he began his ministry in St. Jude Masindi Town Parish in Oima Diocese, Uganda, as a curate. He also served as the chaplain of Masindi High School, 1999 to 2000. Father Charimpa was transferred from St. Jude to Ibanda Catholic Parish in Mbarara Ark Diocese, Uganda, where he served as a curate for a year. From 2001 to 2006, the superior of the congregation transferred Father Gervas to Kichwamba Catholic Parish in Fort Fortal Diocese, Uganda, where he served as assistant parish priest for five years. Within this same period, Father Gervas was sent to Makere University for postgraduate studies, where he graduated with a dipl postgraduate diploma in secondary education. 2006 to 2007, having served in the parishes for some years, the major superiors transferred Father Charimpa to Apostle of Jesus Seminary Bukinda in Kabale Diocese, Uganda. He served there for about a year as teacher and formator. 2008-2009. He served as curate of Kamwezi Catholic Parish in Kabale Diocese in Uganda before he was transferred to South Africa Botswana delegation where he served for about 13 years, 2009 to 2021. After carrying pastoral activities in East Africa for many years, Father Charimpa was transferred by the major superiors of the Institute to South Africa. While in South Africa, Father Gervas was first assigned as curate at St. Scholastica Catholic Parish in Sanin Diocese, South Africa, where he served for about a year before he was given a transfer to Kimberley Diocese. There, he also served as Education Secretary of Sanin Catholic Diocese. From Sanin, he was transferred to Kimberley Diocese, where he was appointed parish priest of St. Mary Morokweng Catholic Diocese, of Kimberley from 2009 to 2021. 
where he served for 12 years. This was the last mission Father Charimpa actively served as religious and priest, his ailment and demise. Father Charimpa kept very active and joyful in fulfilling his apostolate. Generally both, generously, both during his time as the, in the, at the parishes and even in the seminary. He had been battling with diabetes since novitiate. Later on, he developed hypertension and chronic kidney disease. Due to complication of diabetes, he developed diabetic foot, which led to amputation of his leg in August last year in South Africa. Having seen his medical condition, which could not permit active apostolate, the superiors in Nairobi requested through the Delegation Superior of South Africa for Father Charimpa to be brought to Nairobi, where he could be under the care of doctors and nurses while residing in St. Joseph Divine Providence House for the Apostle of Jesus. He was flown from South Africa to Nairobi at the beginning of this month. Few days later, his condition started changing and he was taken to Mata Misericordia for medication. The doctors admitted him for close monitoring. Other than the other medical condition which the doctors were managing, other medical tests also showed that he had severe COVID. From the medical report of the doctors, the immediate cause of the death of Father Gervas Charimpa was acute respiratory distress syndrome secondary to COVID. Other tribute, our tribute. We are grateful to God for the life and fruitful service of Father Charimpa in the church through the Institute of the Apostle of Jesus. Father Charimpa, we will remember you for your zeal for apostolate, spirit of resilience, endurance, and sacrifice. Your love for the flock was laid bare when you demanded to go and bid farewell to the Christians of your parish in Kalahari Desert, where you served for 12 years before transferring from Johannesburg to Nairobi. He made general sacrifice in his apostolate and had love for the mission to the extent that he continued to administer to his flock while he suffered from diabetes. He put much into the service of the Lord and his people. May the good Lord receive him into his eternal peace. Our brother has completed his journey on earth. We are, we, may we too be found ready when the Lord calls us. At the time of his death, Father Gervas was 58 years old. He was a professor member of the Religious Missionary Institute of Apostle of Jesus for 28 years. He is number 259 as a member of the Institute, but he is number 52 in the family of Apostle of Jesus in heaven. He served as an ordained Catholic priest for 23 years. We thank his parents and family who offered him to the Institute and to the Church, most of whom are not here because of the travel restrictions in many countries due to the corona pandemic, but are joining in prayer wherever they are. Father Gervas Charimpa, your brothers, the Apostle of Jesus, and all the faithful you ministered to, represented by those gathered here, in the company of your family and friends, fare thee well. May your soul rest in peace. Eulogy of the late Father Proches Shanklan Temu, family background. Reverend Father Proches Shanklan Temu AJ was born on February 20, 1974, in Tanzania, Sembeti village, Marangu Kati, Moshi rural area, Moshi Diocese, Kilimanjaro province. He was son of the late Mr. Raymond Warsingi Temu and Mrs. Regina Enna Elias, both Christian parents. He was baptized on August 15, 1976 at Samanga Catholic Parish in Moshe Diocese, Tanzania, and he received the Sacrament of Confirmation on January 8, 1989 in the same parish. Education and Religious Formation. He did his primary education in Kirefure Primary School, Marango Moshi, Tanzania, from 1981 to 1991. After his primary level studies, he felt called to join religious and missionary life through the Institute of Apostle of Jesus and was admitted to the Apostle of Jesus Minor Seminary of Uru in Moshi Diocese, Tanzania, 
where he undertook his ordinary level education from 1992 to 1995, and advanced level studies from 1996 to 1997. Novitiate. He entered the novitiate of Apostle of Jesus in Uruthiro Mero Diocese, Kenya, in 2001, and made his first religious profession on June 29, 2003. Philosophy. He was then admitted to the major seminary, the Apostle of Jesus Philosophicum in Nairobi, from 1998 to 2001, where he successfully graduated with a diploma in philosophy and religious studies, also a Bachelor of Arts degree in philosophy from Urbaniana University, in Rome, Italy. Theology. He joined the Scholastica of Apostle of Jesus also in Nairobi as a young professor for theological studies from 2003. He undertook the transitory ministry of, ministries of lecture and acolyte in preparation for the priesthood and graduated with a diploma and degree in sacred theology in 2008. Father Temu became a perpetual member of the Institute of Apostle of Jesus on August 22, 2007 with the profession of final vows and he is, num he is member number 384 in the institute. He was ordained to the diaconate on December 8, 2007 in Nairobi, Kenya and to the priesthood on July 17, 2008 by Right Reverend I Amani Masawe, Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Moshi in Tanzania. Pastoral Ministries. Father Proches Temu served in various capacities in Kenya as a religious and priest, 2008 to 2012. After his ordination as a priest, he began his ministry at Kalokol Catholic Parish, Lodua Catholic Diocese, Kenya, as a curate. He was then transferred to the Catholic Archdiocese of Mombasa in Kenya. In Mombasa Archdiocese, Father Proches was assigned as the curate of Chumvini Catholic Parish. 2013 to 2020. Due to the urgent need for a hospital chaplain, Father Temu was transferred from Mombasa Archdiocese, where he worked for a short time, to Mero Catholic Diocese, where he was appointed to serve as the hospital chaplain of St. Teresa Mission Hospital in Mero Catholic Diocese, Kenya. While serving as hospital chaplain, Father Temu resided in Kirua Catholic Parish with other Apostle of Jesus members and also participated in some pastoral activities of the parish. 20, 2020 to July 19, 2021. Having served as hospital chaplain for about seven years, Father Temu was transferred by the major superiors of the Institute to Kericho Catholic Diocese, where he was appointed by the bishop as the parish priest of Kabuloin Catholic Parish, Kericho Catholic Diocese, Kenya, a place where he served to the day of his demise, his ailment and demise. Father Temu kept very active and joyful in fulfilling his apostolate, generously both during his time at the chaplaincy and even in the parish. He was of good health during his time of service as a religious and priest. However, few days before his hospitalization, Father Temu started feeling weak with the loss of appetite and it was on Saturday, 17th, 2021, that Father Temu went to Kipchimchim Hospital in Kericho for medical attention. Upon reaching the hospital, the doctors found that his sugar level was high and it was controlled for some time. Sadly, on Sunday, the sugar level of Father Temu went high again. And on July 19th, 2021, at around 2.30 a.m., Father Temu passed on. According to the medical report of the doctor, Father Temu died of high blood sugars. The doctors were requested to do further investigations to establish other causes of death. The postmortem result also found out that Father Temu, other than the high blood sugars, had COVID-19, which also contributed to his demise. Our tribute. We are grateful to God for the life and fruitful service of Father Temu in the church, both through the Institute of Apostle of Jesus. Father Temo, we will remember you for your generous sacrifice and love for the missions. You are inspirational in your words and of encouragement to the sick, the Christians of your parish whom you serve to the last day, and to all of us. Your sense of humor and ever jolly face will never ever part from our memories, but will continue to shine on us from your place in heaven. 
at the time of his death. Father Proche's term was 47 years old. He was a professed member of the Religious Missionary Institute of the Apostle of Jesus for 18 years. He is number 384 as a member of the Institute, but he is number 53 of the family of Apostle of Jesus in heaven. He served as an ordained Catholic priest for 13 years. We thank his parents and family who offered him to our institute and to the church, most of whom are not here because of the travel restrictions in many countries due to the corona pandemic, but are joining in prayer wherever they are. For the Proches Temu, your brothers, the Apostle of Jesus, and all the faithful you ministered to, represented by those gathered here in the company of your family and friends, fare thee well. May you rest in peace. Amen. And now may I invite Father Isaiah, who is going to officially invite the nuncio to first perform the rite of placing the religious symbols, and then later to lead us. Welcome, Father. Your Excellency, Habetus Mateus Maria Van Megan Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, dear brothers and sisters, priests, religious, I take this chance to welcome our main celebrant to lead us in this ceremony. Welcome. In life, Father Jervas and Father Proches cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet them with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Father Jervas and Father Proches received the sign of the cross. May they now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. In the Eucharist, 
Father Gervas and Father Proch has shared in the mystery of the passion, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May they now share in the eternal banquet. With this stole, Father Jervas and Father Proch have celebrated the sacraments of the Church. May Jesus, the High Priest, receive him and have mercy on him. How do you place it here? How do you place it? Father Jervas and Father Proch has committed their life to observe the constitutions of the Apostles of Jesus. May the Lord grant them pardon where they fail to live it to the full. May we all arise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you, Amen. and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray with me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servants, Father Jervas and Father Proches, who have fallen asleep in Christ, may we rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Book of Wisdom. The righteous man, though he die early, will be at rest. For all the age is not honored for length of time, nor measured by number of years. But understanding is gray hair for men, and a blameless life is a ripe old age. There was one who pleased God and was loved by him, and while living among sinners, he was taken up. He was caught up at least evil change his understanding, and the guile receives his soul. For the fascination of wickedness obscures what is good, and roving desire perverts the innocent mind. Being perfected in a short time, he fulfilled long years, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he took him quickly from the midst of wickedness. Yet the peoples saw and did not understand, nor take such a thing to heart, that God's grace and mass are with his elect and he watches over his holy ones. The word of the Lord.
a reading from this first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not be we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the day it will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable nature must on the imperishable must put on the imperishable and this mortal nature must put on immort immortality when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality then shall come to pass the saying that is written Death is swallowed upon victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The Lord be with you. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus answered to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to Jesus, I know that you will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. 
I believe that you are a Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died where Christ is absent, there is death, where God is not present, there is darkness and nothingness, and in fact, that is the reason why we celebrate this Eucharist here today, that our brothers, our deceased brothers, will not descend into eternal death, but be accepted into the eternal life which God is. Because God is the way, the truth, and the life. In him we receive life to the full. The first reading of today was taken from the book of Wisdom, fourth chapter, and we started at verse 7. But if you would go back to that chapter, the first, very first verse of that chapter goes more or less like this. It says, God finds pleasure in the childless, childless man in whom there is no guile. That was something very strange for Jewish culture, something strange to say that, that God can take pleasure in a childless man. Even in the time of Jesus himself, was teaching, and by the way, is still teaching, that the blessing of God is the blessing of many children. And in fact, it is this book of wisdom which is more or less written in the same time of the life of Jesus. A new perception of reality had set in that the life we have continues in eternal life and not only in our children. God can bless you. In fact, God blesses you even though you might be childless as long as you live in the presence of the Lord. Therefore also, that it seems that Jesus had no issues in being friends with Lazarus and his sisters Martha and Mary. The three, Lazarus, Martha and Mary, lived together, were not married, had no children. In a sense, Lazarus, the name in Hebrew means as much may God give, explains it already. Lazarus did not build his life on human expectations, but on the expectation 
that God may give. And Lazarus was a virtuous man. And even though he died, he would find life eternal. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Jesus prophesied that Lazarus, though dead for us, would rise again. And many knew Lazarus for his good works. In fact, it says in the Gospel how many Jews came to visit the house of Lazarus to show their respects for what he had done in his life. And was Lazarus old? Probably not. He might have been end of his 40s, in the middle of his 50s, like our two brothers here, who died, both of them, before their time. They died in the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ, life eternal, that incorruptibility of which Paul speaks is given to those who have built their life already in the life which is corrupted, so to say. Isn't it Paul who writes, for this perishable nature must put on the imperishable, and this mortal nature must put on immortality. But what Paul basically is saying is, yes, your life will be imperishable, yes, your life is immortal, but, but under there, you need this foundation of your mortal life, of your perishable life. You need to work. You need to work with your talents. You need to work with the gifts that God has given you. The stronger the foundation you have built here on earth, the more assured you can be of the life given to you. You need, so to say, that strong foundation of a life sacrificed for Christ. A life spent for Christ. The corruptible. In that sense, Paul also says to us that the body is important. It is on this body that Christ continues to build into life eternal. And he himself as we have heard through the witnesses of the disciples. And what was it? Yesterday we celebrated the feast of Mary Magdalene, the first who saw Christ in his glorified body after the resurrection. And the seed of that glorified body is the body as we carry it with us here today. So Paul says, work with the life you have. Men of Galilee, what are you gazing into? Heaven, that as the angels said to the disciples when Jesus went up to heaven, wanting to say, your life at the moment is not up there, but here, work with it. Make sure that the kingdom of God is established on this earth. We need to use the talents and the gifts that Christ has given to each and every one of us. We have heard the eulogy of Father Gervas and Father Proches. Both went through many changes in their lives. They were changed from place to place. Sometimes only one year or even less. Like an exile like a refugee struggling from one place to another, sometimes victorious, sometimes probably defeated, sometimes with many merits, and sometimes with dark sins. But they continued working within the congregation. They continued giving their life 
for the kingdom of God. They struggled on, did not give up to combat evil and resignation in their lives and the lives of others. Both of them very much aware of their own weaknesses. Both of them very much aware of the mercy of God that we are all so much in need of. Both of them very much aware of the corruptibility of their bodies, of their lives. Both of them, like Lazarus, childless men, Lazarus, may God give. We pray today for our brothers that they may receive the gift of immortality, the gift of incorruptibility, that God indeed may give them the eternal life for which they have longed so much when they were on this earth. Is it not true that our life of celibacy or also for the religious woman, the life in virginity, is a sign of these things to come. It's a sign that we look over the limits of death already into eternal life. That yes, we can be childless and that we look forward to the blessings of God in heaven where man is not given into marriage and shall not be married. It is in our religious life that we're already here on earth are the sign of things to come in our corruptible bodies. Of course, if we have to appear in the presence of the Lord, most of us have very little to offer. Most of us have nothing to boast upon. Most of us have nothing to show for because God knows us better than we know ourselves and he knows our deepest and sometimes darkest secrets. If we stand before God, then we are all just poor Lazarus. God gives we are standing in front of him with empty hands, with our corrupted bodies, with our failures and defeats, our very few victories that, frankly speaking, are poor and insignificant in the presence of God. Today, as we celebrate this funeral of these two brothers of us, we pray for them that God may give, that he may show his tender mercy to them. And at the same time, we pray for the families, but also we pray for ourselves, because these untimely deaths of the two brothers of us who died, as we've heard in the first reading, before their time, they also, in a sense, a wake-up call for all of us to get ready, to prepare ourselves, to commit more, to work harder, to love more, to sacrifice more, because the Lord comes at the moment that we least expect. Amen.
May we arise for the general intercession. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Father Garbas and Father Prochus receive the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead them over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Our brothers, Father Garvas and Father Proches, who are nourished at the table of the Savior, welcome them into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Our brothers, Father Garvas and Father Proches spent their life following Jesus, who are just and obedient. Count them among all holy men and women who sing in your courts, Lord, in your mercy, your prayer. Amen. Our brothers, Father Garavas and Father Proches, shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring them into your presence where they will take their place in the heavenly liturgy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins. Again, it's you are love and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For the mourners, the and friends of Father Garavas and Father Proches, seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brothers, for the Garbas and for the Proches. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humble present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of our serv- of your servants, Sir Jervas and Proches, we beseech your mercy that they who didn't doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find also in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your, faithful Lord, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling place turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Irine fumbola himani Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David Kamau, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It is now time for receiving the Eucharist. It is only for Catholics who have prepared. The deacon, the priest, and the bishop will bring it next to you. So just see where the ministers for the Eucharist are, and then you will receive.
given by the choir, those who have some offertory to make for the maintenance of the church, this will be the time when the song is going on. Thank you. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brothers Jervas and Proches may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I request that we be seated. would like to thank sincerely Your Excellency for leading us in the Eucharistic celebration. I would like to thank our novices and scholastic for leading us in the choir. Before the final commendation and procession to the cemetery where the remains of our brothers and priests will be laid, we'll have just some few who are going to pay the final tributes and this is going to be on behalf of us all. We'll have the family representative. The families were not able to come. We have just their friends. But I would request maybe one of the Christians, especially the chair person of Kabuloin Parish, to speak on behalf of the family of these disease confreres. After the family representative, we are going to have the representative of the Bishop of Kericho, where Father Proches was working, and that will be Father Ibrahim. I hope he's around. He will give, he will pay tribute on behalf of the Bishop of Kericho. And then we'll have the representative of the Institute, that will be very Reverend Father Angelo Betelli, the Pontifical Commissary. After him, Father Isaiah Ajiri, the regional superior, will move a vote of thanks on behalf of all the apostles of Jesus. Then the main celebrant will do the final commendation and then he will make his final remarks and give the blessing after which we are going to make procession to the cemetery. And now may I invite the family representative to come and at least pay the tribute. Your Excellency, the Nuncio, the clergy, and the faithful, God is good, all and all the time, all the on behalf of uh, Catholic faithful of Kabaloin, I stand before you to bid a uh, farewell to our fallen father, Father Project Stem, and to say, may the Lord uh, give him rest and also to our fallen father Carvaze may the Lord give him a safe journey and may the Lord receive him uh, uh, and give eternal peace thank you thank you so much and now may I invite the representative of the Bishop of Kericho to come and pay tribute on behalf of Kericho Diocese. Your Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, the leadership of the Institute of Apostles of Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters in priesthood, my dear brothers, and all the lay faithful who are here present, I'm here to convey the message of condolence and words of consolation 
from our Bishop, Right Reverend Alfredo Teach, of the Cathedral Diocese of Caricho, to the entire fraternity of the Institute of, of Apostles of Jesus, and the people whom the two brothers here lying, minister to here in Kenya and in South Africa. The time these two served in this world, we see it as a short time, and especially for us from Kerichi Diocese, whereby we had a privilege to work with Father Proches for very, very few months. Father Proches, in the few months we knew him, he was a very energetic man, very talented, especially in playing the piano or the keyboard, and we had a very bright future with him. We had many plans for our liturgy in the diocese with him. Not knowing that that short time and our plans were nothing. Already to Jesus, to God, he had worked enough. But for us, a very short time. So may all of us be consoled. I mean, their souls rest in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Ibrahim, for the tribute on behalf of the Bishop and the Catholic faithful of Kericho Diocese. Before I invite the Reverend Father Angelo, who is going to pay tribute on behalf of all the members of the Institute, I would like to recognize and appreciate the flowers which was given by the family of Anne, Jerome, and Bran, Ellen, and Tom for the funeral of our fathers, and they have written, Dear Fathers, Proches, and Gervas, Dear friends, rest in peace, we will miss you, you will always be in our hearts. So we appreciate so much for these flowers. And now may I invite the Reverend Father Angelo to pay tribute on behalf of all the members. Most welcome. Mungu ni Roma kila wakati Your Excellency Father Nuncio all the members of the blessed uh, congregation of the apostles of Jesus all the Christians uh, who have come here first of all I wish uh, to share with you the condolences uh, we have received from uh, so many sides on this uh, very sad day. The condolences uh, from the members of the Commissariat, from uh, Father Raphael, the elected uh, appointed Bishop of Nebi, from uh, many communities, uh, all the communities of uh, the Apostles of Jesus who are uh, in this very moment uh, celebrating Mass uh, for our two fathers from uh, the Bishop of Kabale, the diocese from where Father Gervas comes, and uh, from so many Christians who are united with us in this moment. May the Lord who consoles those who are mourning be near to each one of us in this moment. Just uh, yesterday we celebrated the feast of uh, Saint Mary Magdalene, the Apostle of the Apostles. And uh, she teaches us how to see things. We wear or remove glasses in order to see things the way they are. And uh, she was able, through her tears, Kwamachosi, Yake, Kumona, Yesu. Through the glasses of her tears, she was able to see the first, to see him, the risen Lord. And so today, 
we are wearing the glasses of tears and the Lord is inviting us to see this moment in the true perspective of eternity. We cry today, but uh, at the same time we give the Lord thanks because uh, in the perspective of eternity, which is our true perspective, we rejoice because uh, our brothers, our fathers, they are now living in God. As uh, the Apostle Paul says, as uh, whether we live or die, we live in Jesus. And Jesus, who is our life and our resurrection, now is uh, welcoming them and uh, sharing with them his resurrection. I think, I think the, first, the best eulogy for our fathers is, uh, are the signs that are on their coffin. They have been called fathers all through their ministry, sharing the very name of God, the Father, and uh, uh, having been given the grace to be fathers to so many Christians and to really have children as children of God. They have been uh, presiding the Eucharist and the sacraments, taking the place of Jesus, the head of the body, his body with the church. They have been conformed to Christ, the Good Shepherd, making uh, so many efforts to be like him, not without uh, their limitations, maybe not without uh, mistakes, as we all have, but uh, trying beyond their capacities to imitate him, the Good Shepherd, the Shepherd of our souls. They've been uh, sharing uh, this ministry of teaching uh, with the, the Holy Spirit, the interior teacher, the one who reminds us the goodness of God. And now, in this uh, Sanduku, Yanieupe, they go back to the Lord who gave them life, so to receive life eternal. They invite us, whether we live or we need to live in Christ, so that my Christ may live in us and we may do good as much as we allow Jesus to, go, to do good with us. As we pray for them, they pray for us, so that we may be faithful to this great, uh, wonderful vocation, to be religious and priests, so that uh, God, the Holy Trinity, may be known and loved, and we may live as his true children. We pray for them, they pray for us and uh, let uh, the Holy Spirit continue to guide our lives so that we may enjoy life in abundance starting from now. Tu si fu Jesu Christo. Thank you so much, Father Angelo, for the tribute you have paid on our behalf. And now may I invite Father Isaiah to move a vote of thanks and later on he will invite Your Excellency who is going to give his final remarks, blessings and commendation. Your Excellency Habitus Matthäus Maria the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, the Pontifical Commissary Apostle Jesus for the Angelo Betelli, the members of the Institute, priests, deacon, and all the priests around, the religious sisters 
and the brothers present. My dear novices, our dear visitors, and all of you who have come, God is good. All the time. I would like to thank God for the gift of these two priests, Father Jerivas, a schoolmate, and Father Prochestemu, a workmate, his first mission in Kalakol, Lodwa, I received him. They did their best to please God through their vocation as priests. They left us, but in our memories, we will continue to remember them for who they were to us and what they did for the life of the Institute and for the Church. May you rest in peace. On behalf of the Institute of the Apostles of Jesus, the Pontifical Commissary and the Commissariate, and on my own behalf, I extend a vote of thanks to our Apostolic Nisu to Kenya and South Sudan, His Excellency Habetus, for accepting very quickly to come and pray for our two brothers and celebrate this Mass. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your humility. Thank you for your humbleness to us. I would also like to thank the family in absentia due to the situation that we know they are not able to come from Uganda and from Tanzania. May God console them and grant them peace of mind and peace of heart. I also wish to thank our Pontifical Commissary for his cooperation and making things possible for us to arrange for the burial of our brothers, especially as he invited our Nuncio to come and preside over this celebration. I appreciate and acknowledge all your presence and your solidarity with us, especially the priests, religious men and women who have come far and wide, the family of Marangoni and Mazold, who also have been working with us through this moment, the Sacred Heart Sisters, the Evangelizing Sisters, and the contemplative evangelizers for being with us. Thank you for your solidarity with us. For the Christians from the various parishes, from Kabulon Paris, Kerichu Diocese, also Christians from Meru Diocese, we feel encouraged, we feel consoled, and feel strengthened with your presence. Thank you very much for your coming and being with us. I also take the chance to thank the general administration and the committee who sat to plan for this sitting and escorting our brothers, our brothers on their final time with us. I wish to thank the Shrine community in the passion of Father Geoffrey Nira, director of the shrine, and his team, especially those who prepared the liturgy for us and the church. 
and the altar. Thank you for welcoming us in this church and as we feel at home. In a special way, I thank the seminar committee, community, the novices for the singing and the liturgy. May God bless you too. I thank all the friends of our approaches and of our journeys for the love and sacrifice you have made to come and see them at this last moment. May God bless you too. I thank the technical team, the Capuchin TV, for covering us and giving us the people uh, in the world that we are uh, in this celebration. Thank you for your uh, presence and services. This is not the first time, this is the second time you are with us and will continue to be with us. Thank you. Lastly, I thank all of you. If you have not mentioned you, I appreciate your presence wherever you are and who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May God bless you all and grant you a safe journey. Lastly, I take this chance to welcome His Excellency, the Nuncio, for the last remark and the final blessing. You're welcome. It was already said by Father Angelo and by Father Zayas. The brothers we are burying today, they were both priests, both serving in parishes, the one a bit longer, the other a bit shorter. And the signs of their priesthood are here on their respective coffins, Holy Scripture, chalice, stone, the cross. How many times did they not celebrate funeral masses? How many times did they not celebrate the Eucharist for people who died? Now it is our turn to celebrate the Eucharist for them. The Eucharist is in that sense also a mystery that unites us all and which goes over the boundaries of death. As Father Angelo was saying, we have life eternal already on this earth. In fact, the very first Christian communities, the first Christians, they were called Zotin, the living, those who could not die anymore, the seed of eternal life had already been planted in them in baptism and is reinforced and fed each and every time again we celebrate the Eucharist. How many times did Father Gervas and Father Proches not celebrate the Eucharist? How many times did they not lift the chalice to the Lord? How many times did they not distribute the body and blood of Christ and they themselves consume the body and blood of Christ. How many times did they not give the last Holy Communion, the Viaticum, to people who were dying? And also now they themselves have received that same Holy Eucharist as they are on the road, on the way to God himself. And we are now going to recommend them, to recommend them to the angels and martyrs in heaven, that they may receive them into heaven, that they may guide them, that they may pray for them, that they may lead them to the eternal life and to the eternal light, which is God himself. We remain here on this earth 
the church in combat, the struggling church. We continue to pray for them and we hope and expect that they will be joined with the choirs of angels and saints in heaven and pray for us. Dear Father Jarvas, dear Father Proches, rest in peace. Commendation, and after the final commendation, Your Excellency will give us the blessing. Those who are able to go to the cemetery, we will go in procession, and the order of procession will be the those who are carrying the thurible, the incense, and then the crucifix will lead, then followed by the other servers. Then there will be the hearse which will be carrying the remains of our priest. Then the other Christians will follow and then the clergy will now be the last in that order of procession. I'd like to appreciate so much the Apostle of Jesus Priest from Kericho for the sacrifice they have made to transport our brother for the approaches here. And now may I invite Your Excellency to do the final commendation and then give the final blessing. Thank you. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Father uh, Jervas and Father Proches, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we will see Jervas and Proches again and enjoy their friendship. And although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. We sprinkle the body with the holy water as in remembrance of their baptism. We incense their bodies as a sign that they have become dwelling places of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit they received in baptism, confirmation and holy priesthood. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brothers Jervas and Proches in this sure and 
certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, they will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Jerovas and Proches in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brothers forever. Amen. Receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you and with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before the final song, would like the anthem of the congregation to be sung, so that it, at the cemetery we don't sing it again. So I ask the choir to intone for us the anthem of Apostle of Jesus.
Your Catholic identity. You are watching Capuchin TV. For any complaints, comments, or compliments on our programming, you can either write to us on info at capuchintv.co.ke or you can call us directly on 0717 424 866. Your complaint shall be addressed within seven days. Remember to keep a copy of your communication with us. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. In front of you, it's Felista and Shan ready to present for you a song called From the Rising Sun to the Setting Sun." We start. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundations, he'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundations, He'll never let me down. Great is a faithfulness to me. Great is a faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting sun, I will praise your name. From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Thank you. Cari nonni, cari nonni. This Saturday, 24th July, Capuchin TV will join the Ethel Foundation for the Aged as they transit from being a community-based organization to a national foundation. This event in thanksgiving and honor of our grandparents and the elderly will take place at the Little Daughters of St. Joseph Retreat and Conference Center, Karen, in the Archdiocese of Nairobi. The Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, His Excellency Bart Van Megan, will be the principal celebrant at the Holy Mass from 10 a.m. Capuchin TV is proud to be associated with Ethel Foundation for the Aged. I am with you always. Matthew 28 verse 20 is the message of Pope Francis for the first world day for grandparents and the elderly to be celebrated every fourth Sunday in the month of July. Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Wa muumini tumsifu Yesu Kristo Jumapili hii ya kumi na saba ya kipindi cha kawaida Capuchin TV tunajiunga na waumini wa parokia ya Bikira Maria Malkia Wabingu Regina Shelly eneo la Karen Jimbo kuu la Nairobi Ibada za misa ni kama ifuatavyo Misa ya kwanza saa moja na nusu 
misa ya pili saa tatu na misa ya tatu saa tano asubuhi masomo ya misa somo la kwanza kutoka kitabu cha pili cha wafalme sura ya nne mstari wa 42 hadi wa 44 wimbo wa katikati zaburi 145 kitikio wao fumbo
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Their resting place in the peace of God. May the Lord now welcome them at the table of God's children. Father has blessed, says the Lord. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you allowed the graves of all who believe in you and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our brothers may sleep here in peace until you awaken them to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then they will see your fa you face to face, and in your light will see light and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. is the lover of his people and our only sure hope. Let us ask him to deepen our faith and sustain it uh, sustain us in this dark hour. We shall respond. Bless us and keep us, O Lord. Bless us and keep us, O Lord. <coughs> you became a little child for our sake, sharing our human life to your we pray. Bless us and keep us all. You grew in wisdom, age, and grace, and learned obedience through suffering. You, we pray. Bless us and keep us all. You welcome the children, promising them your kingdom. To you, we pray. Bless us and keep us all. You comforted those who mourn the loss of children and friends, to you we pray. Bless us and keep us O Lord. You took upon yourself the suffering and death of us all, to you we pray. Bless us and keep us O Lord. Because God has chosen to call our brothers, uh, Father Gervas and Father Process, from this life to himself, we commit their bodies uh, to earth for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the first born from the dead. So let us commend our brothers to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace them in peace and raise up their bodies on the last day. And now the bodies are going to be lowered into the grave before the minister will continue, so I request the body is to be lowered at once. <laughs> Thank you. 
What are you aware of baptize? May God accomplish the work he started in you. What is your temple of God? The Lord will raise you on the last day. So now we will be putting the soil we'll begin with the priest around. Then we will invite religious brothers and sisters, followed by the Christians from Kabuloin, the family members and relatives.
the placing of the cross and other symbols. And the other symbols which we are going to use will be flowers and candles. And when it comes to the time of flowers, the one which is having the cross, the sign, the, the, sign, the cross sign that will be put by the pontifical commissary and his assistant, Sister Jacinta, will put it on the two grave. Then another flower will be put by the regional superior on behalf of all the members, the one of the heart. He will be joined by some representatives from the Marengoni and Masoldi family. That is, some sisters from the Sacred Art, some from the Evangelizing Sisters, and then some from Contemplative. They will join Father Isaiah will do it on behalf of the Apostle of Jesus. And then their own one will be done by the will be put by the representatives of the families and friends and then now the other flowers will be distributed for all of us who will also be putting it yeah and after that one now the candles will also be put then after the final blessing there, there are some snacks there and some water just at the entrance where we are coming from we are all invited, you can pass there, take something at least to reduce the thirst. We appreciate you so much for being with us, for mourning with us, and for celebrating with us at this time. Now I invite the Father to continue with the rite, which will be the placing of cross on the two tombs. Father, we first recite some prayers, then we'll put some other flowers. This is the tree of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, come, let us adore him. Together, come, come, come let us adore him. Now we invite the regional superior, Father Isaiah, the representatives from the Mansoldi and Marengoni family to come and put with him together. I request some sisters from Sacred Art, some sisters from Evangelizing, and then some brothers or, or fathers from Contemplative to join the Father Isaiah to put the... Sifi Yesu Kristo, mwena milena amina, mwekua hapa katika shirika na posa vijisa siku ya leo, mwekua ni siku ya uzuni. Mwena 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 takatifu, na tunamalizia na mbolezi na kipindi hiki kwa kuweza kwa sinikisha mbibu hawa kwa sana. Tumalizia kipindi hichi yetu kipenda kujiunga na mmoja wa wa apostle Jesus akiwa hapa Father James kwa maneno mawili matatu na kuwatuliza wenzake katika shirika lapo.
na wafada shikaribu Hei nigependa kwa niyaba ya shirika letu ya mtume wa yesu Kushukuru sana e, Captain Television na Radio Kwa kukuja kuungana nasi pamoja Muna panya kazi nzuri Anaidi kama shirika na kibinafsi pia Na kwa mba tunayendelea kutayendelea kufanya kazi pamoja Na mungu waendelea kwa bariki pia katika kazi enu nzuri Muna panya inchi yetu Na kama mkatoliki pia na shiriki mara kwa mara Muna panya kazi nzuri Munga endelea kwa bariki katika hii kazi nzuri Na muendelea kutumikia mungu Yule muna tumikia kanisa Asante ni sana kwa niaba ya shirika letu Ila mitume wa yesu Mungu awabariki Karibu fana Fana ni piko kubwa Kamba mwesu liwapita watu tumekua watu kimisilikisha Fana mungine katika shirika leno Kuna wakati uwa Mafada wa wili Mwana sana mafada wa tatu Kwa munda wa munda mfupi kabisa Matuna na siyada ila kuwambea Kwa hata wale ni sana shirika hili na Apostle Jesus Kwa hende ni mwenyezi mungu wa siku kwa pariki Kwa hatu mungu kumbuna hapo lelea kufanya mtumia mungu wake Asante kwa niyaba ya Captain TV Mekua ni Father Vincent Shumila Mungu wa siku hili tumekua nae Chris Mekua nae Simiu Tumekua nae Bor Mekua nae Fred Kwa niyaba yao wato tunasema asante ni sana Mwaja kwa mwaja Tukutu tukisema asanteni Mwendelea kuwambea sharika hili Kwa apostle Jesus Mwendelea kuwambea wagunja wote Mwendelea kuwambea walipo Na hasa kutokana na changa hili la COVID-19 Mbaya changa li mekomba dunia nzima Tunasema kwenemi Tunajua na tunamatumaini kwa mwenyezi mungu Atakuhinda, atakupa nguvu Na tutaweza kushinda changa hili Asanteni mungu kwa mbariki Kwa eno ni padri Vincent Shumila Moja moja, moja kwa moja narudi kwa ke Kule studio ya tuwe kati njiri ya Santeni Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. You are watching Capuchin TV. For any complaints, comments, or compliments on our programming, you can either write to us on info at capuchintv.co.ke or you can call us directly on 0717-424-866. 0717-424-866. Your complaint shall be addressed within seven days. Remember to keep a copy of your communication with us. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Cari nonni, cari nonni. This Saturday, 24th July, Capuchin TV will join the Ethel Foundation for the Aged as they transit from being a community-based organization to a national foundation. This event in thanksgiving and honor of our grandparents and the elderly will take place at the Little Daughters of St. Joseph Retreat and Conference Center, Karen, in the Archdiocese of Nairobi. The Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, His Excellency Bart Van Megan, will be the principal celebrant at the Holy Mass from 10 a.m. Capuchin TV is proud to be associated with Ethel Foundation for the Aged. I am with you always. Matthew 28 verse 20 
is the message of Pope Francis for the first World Day for grandparents and the elderly to be celebrated every fourth Sunday in the month of July. Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity.